Hey there everyone, my name is Eric's and welcome to a tutorial on how to create a Minecraft 1.13 spigot or bucket server. I'm going to be covering how to install build tools, run build tools, actually create the server, port forward, and finally how to install plugins. So by the end of this video you should be able to create an entire Minecraft server for yourself and then play with your friends. So that's the goal of them, right? <laughs> Anyways. Before we get started, I want to let you know that the version we are going to be installing today isn't quite ready for public use. Now, I do expect for them to be releasing one that's more stable here in the future, but the one we release today won't be ready for public use. So, just keep that in mind. This is experimental use only. Alright, to get started, we want to open up a browser. I will go ahead and use Google Chrome and drag it over here. Alright, so once we got our browser, we want to go to spigotmc.org. This is where we'll be getting the files for Bucket, and we'll be using this later on. But you can go all across here, you can find all sorts of stuff here. But you want to go to spigot slash build tools, and this is where we will find what we need to install build tools. So you can see that we have buildtools.jar and it says last successful artifacts. You want to always make sure that it's the last successful one. So we'll go ahead and click on this, get it downloading, and it should finish up. We'll say keep. All right, and now we have build tools. So I'm going to go ahead and take this to my desktop right here. All right, so I've got it on my desktop now. I will go ahead and make a new folder because we're going to want to use this later on. So I'll just call it build tools. You can really call it whatever you want. All right, but now that I drag that in there, I have build tools. Now, in order to run build tools, we're going to need a tool called git. Some of you may have heard of it before, but it's pretty simple. You can just go to git-scm.org and then it will take you to .com. I guess you could do either one, but that's where I go. And then whatever platform you're on, I'm doing a tutorial for Windows, so I would obviously download this. So you would go ahead and download that, and you pretty much just go through all of the basic options. Just basically hit next and make sure everything works for your computer. And once you have that installed, we're gonna go back into our folder, and we're gonna create a new file called, oh, here we go. All right, so we're gonna create a new file called run.sh. And we'll hit yes, because we're changing the file type. And I will go ahead and get this ready for us. It's a long, it's a tricky command sometimes, so let me just pull this up. All right, so now that we've got our run.sh over here, there we go, run.sh. So we are editing this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and type java minus jar, and then whatever this file name is called. So we're gonna be using java, and make sure you have the latest version installed and works for your operating system. I get so many comments that say it doesn't work and usually it boils down to them not having the right version of Java. So Java minus jar build tools dot jar. So it'll go with this and then minus minus rev for revision 1.13. And this here gets you the it gives you the ability to specify what version of a server you want to create. So we could go we go I think they have this. I think we go all the way back to 1.8. Uh, with build tools I think I don't know I haven't tried but 1.8 is when build tools came around so I'm assuming you can go there but basically when you want a specific version use this so yeah that's that and so we will go ahead and save this and since we have get installed it should associate .sh files with shell so it should run in bash so we'll open this up and it's over here on my other screen and you should see something along the lines of this coming up. So you'll see something here, and it's going to take a really long time for that to run. So I'll let this run, and then we'll be back once it's done. Okay, once that's done, it should have automatically closed, and you now should see a populated folder with, most importantly, craft bucket and spigot 1.13.jar. So we are going to move on to the next step, which is port forwarding. And the way you do this is you need to press the Windows key or go down to your start menu. So I'll go to the start menu and I will type CMD and hit enter. This will open up our handy dandy command prompt. What we're going to do in here is type IP config. This will show our IP information for the computer and our modem. So what we'll do with this is find default gateway under the thing you're connected to. So whatever 
as something here, a default gateway. Mine is the very bottom one, and the number we're looking for is something like 192.168.01. That's the most common. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this number, open up our browser, and we're going to put it in here. So we'll go to here, and as you can see, we went to an actual page, and we'll log into our router. Generally, things are admin password or admin admin. You can generally find this on the side of your modem or router uh, or on the box. So mine is admin password. I'll go ahead and log into this and wait a second for it. Sometimes they're a little slow. Any moment now. Okay. So we're in, we are going to now go to port forwarding. So generally you find these under firewall, but this one is a little different and this one's under advanced. Now keep in mind that your router or modem will be different from mine, most likely. You might have the same one, you might be super lucky and you can just follow exactly what I do. But if it's different, you might have to do a little digging around to find port forwarding. But it's not too hard. So I promise you, look around a little bit, you should be able to find something. Okay. So now that we're in port forwarding, we're going to go ahead and make a new service or whatnot. And I'm going to call it 1.13. And the service type, make sure it's TCP and UDP or both. So if you have both selected, you're good. So mine already populated 12 into it for me, which is my IPv4. But where you found your default gateway, if you go up a little bit, you should see IPv4 address. And you should see this here. This is the address that your computer has on your personal network. So put that in, finish it off, and that is how the router will know where the game is coming from. Now the starting and ending port for Minecraft is 25565. And so you do that in both, 25565, and we will hit add. So I'll wait a second for that to be added, and there it is. We have 1.13, all this here, ta-da! All right, it's good, so make sure it's active, all that. And now we'll go ahead and just minimize out of there and we will not need this anymore. So now it's time to actually make the server. We're going to go ahead and make a new folder. I will once again call it 1.13. I will open it up and in here we will go ahead and drag spigot into here. You can do spigot or you can do craft bucket but I recommend spigot. It's a little more optimized. So I'm going to take 1.13 off the end of it so it's just spigot.jar. Kind of helps things out in the future what we're about to do. And I'll make a new text document and I'll completely rename this to run.bat. So there we go. I will change it. And another tip, like uh, some people were having, is they weren't able to actually uh, get this to turn into a Windows batch file or anything like that, like the .sh that we did earlier and stuff. So what I recommend doing is turning into your view area and turning on file name extensions. So this will make it so you're able to just write it right here. If you don't have that, you'll have to go into your text editor or whatnot, do a save as. So to save you some time later on, go to view and turn file name extensions on. Then you're able to just change it right here. So after all of that rambling, we are now able to type in the command that will run the server. So we'll type java space minus xmx and then this is the way we allocate RAM to our server. I recommend not allocating more than half of your computer's RAM. So if you have 8 gigabytes of RAM, I would say don't allocate more than 4. And if you have 4, I probably would say just don't allocate more than 1. Because you're, you're going to need a lot of RAM for your system resources and other files on here. So I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'm going to go ahead and just allocate one though, because we won't need that much. So by doing that, I do 1G for gigabyte. And then we move on to the next. So 1G minus jar, the name of it, which is spigot.jar. There we are. And minus O, true. We'll go ahead and save that, close it out, and run. Now, I am expecting it to crash. And there we go, it crashed. Like I said, it will crash and you need to open the eula.txt file. I recommend reading through this. It has a lot of good information about running a server, but once you're done reading through that, you can go ahead and change false to true down in the bottom. Close it out, double click run.bat once more, and I'm gonna drag it back over, and it should load up the libraries. So go ahead and launch Minecraft 1.13. I'm doing that right now on my other monitor, and it takes a little bit of its time to start up. 
wait for it any minute now hold on okay uh, discord in-game overlay no I didn't want that that's weird I've never had that pop up alright anyways we are now into here and you should be able to do add server and uh, I'm just gonna leave it Minecraft server and the server address if you're running off of your own computer you can type local host we're gonna do this for now just to see if it will actually connect there it is so this is the server we just added if I hit join open up my console I should see my user logging in there we go it's working so once you guys have that going there it should be pretty simple to get the rest of this done all right so I don't need this open anymore on the local host what we're gonna do now is actually see if our port forwarding worked so what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to change local host to something else but we need our public IP for that so go ahead open up your web browser you don't need your port forwarding anymore and then you will go to a website that I love ipchicken.com once you go to ipchicken.com you should see your IP in blue numbers on the top there mine will be blurred out I recommend only sharing this to people you trust unless if you want to share it and have more people join your server that you don't necessarily trust too much I don't know why you'd want them on your server. I'd recommend purchasing a domain. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of tutorials on purchasing a domain and using that to cover your IP address. But after we have that, I'll go ahead and take those numbers, switch them out with localhost, hit done, and then we'll refresh our page. And we should see it actually working. There we go. Okay, I was getting scared there for a second that I wasn't going to work. But it did. It's actually coming up. And my internet isn't the fastest so it will take a little longer for me but here we are we are in our world and we have connected over an external I wow okay that scared me why is it like that <laughs> 1.13 right all these bugs but as you can see here we are now in a 1.13 world fantastic it works other people can join now too but this is basically just a vanilla world. I mean, where's where's all our stuff here? We got help. Yeah, sure. We got a little bit of bucket, but what else can we do? We want more plugins, right? We have zero plugins. All right. So that's what I'm going to cover next up. So we can go ahead and disconnect from the server here. And we will go ahead and open up our console. So our console is the place that we'll be doing most of our management and we're gonna go ahead and stop the server. You can do that by typing stop, hitting enter, and it's all saved. Now I gotta turn this dang Minecraft music off. There we go. So once you have your server stopped, you can head back over to spigotmc.org, and this is where we will be getting our plugins. So you get your plugins here by hovering over resources and going to search resources. Now, I don't know of many plugins that have been updated for 1.13 yet so I'm gonna search for 1.13 and we're gonna try this one that I do know which is called cargo I've never used it personally so it should be kind of fun trying out a new plugin we're gonna go ahead and hit download and checking there we go so it's downloaded and this will go forever now but cargo 1.3.0 now what we do with this ah, that's a good question we take it out of our browser and we don't put it on our desktop but we go into our server folder and we have this handy dandy folder called plugins go ahead and drag it in there and now that we have it in there start your server once more it will load up much quicker this time because we've already generated all of the terrain Real quick before we test out the plugin, I want to let you know how to opt yourself through the console. So if you want to be able to do the administrator things and really start working uh, without getting into too much permissions plugins, you need to go into the console, type op space, and then your character name. Okay, so our server's done loading, and now we can do things like cargo. So, yep, as you can see, it's got cargo here. Um, I've never used it before so it'll be interesting to see what it's like we'll go ahead and join our server once again and we will log in encrypt and here we are 
So basically, I'm just gonna show you guys this for a proof of concept that it actually works and we can use plugins on 1.13. But if we type help, we can see cargo. So we can type slash cargo, and here we are. So it's a bike cargo plugin, whatnot, and there's all sorts of things you can do in here. I'm not gonna show you how to customize any plugins right now. That is a completely other thing uh, that we'll get into maybe in another video. But if you like this tutorial, please let me know. If you didn't like it, please also let me know. This is a different style that I've never done before, much more uh, talking. But basically, that is all I have for everyone today. You are now able to create a Minecraft 1.13 spigot or bucket server, play with your friends, and install plugins on here. So once again, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and let me know why. If you didn't like it, give me a dislike and tell me why. Uh, anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you later. Goodbye.